Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today we're going to be working on the motor mounts of the ML350. My mounts were busted anyway so I thought I have to change them so might as well just make a video and help some people out that get the idea on the paper but what's actually involved in the job I'll just try to film it so you can see it's it's a little bit tricky but not insanely bad or anything so what we have done so far is taken the wheel off and then the wheel well liner which is held by it's held by plastic uh, nuts like this and they're just on these uh, little screws things inside once we've taken it off we got the heat shield that comes in front to block the access to the motor mount on driver side so there's three nuts that are down at the bottom so mine were really rusted so I busted one but two were still fine so I gotta take that plate off and to do that you can just do it from the top it, it comes right out once you've got the bolts off the plate can be pulled off from the top So after that, there is, hang on, I gotta put the camera inside and see if it actually gets to it. Okay, there's a top bolt that's, uh, actually the camera does pick it up, right? Right there, there's a, there's a nut on top. Once you undo that nut, then the shield, uh, metal shield that covers the mount, that comes off. And this is, I think it's a size 18 mil. Or is it less? I gotta grab some uh, wrenches to try and undo that one. Okay guys, it's a bit of a struggle to put it on, the wrench. I tried the open box end wrench and it was taking too long. So what I tried was a shorter 18 mil socket on the nut. And then wiggle the driver from under the headers like that. And now you can work it in a smaller space like this. And we'll see if that works out because this will speed up the process quite a bit as it's a very slow go with very less movement with just an open box end wrench all right so take off the wrench first oh, sorry the driver and then the socket and now the bolt so there you go this is the quickest way i could think of to do it if you've got a slim wrench, that might actually work out really good. Make sure you keep an eye on this washer. Okay, so now we gotta take out the Torx bolts that are in there after the plate. Let's turn on the Torx bolts. I think it's four, four Torx bolts. Okay guys, so I was able to take off one bolt. It's a size E14 bolt. You put a 20 inch extension and you'll have enough space to actually get there. Is my light actually getting the bolt there? Hang on a minute. There we go. Put the camera down a bit. There you go. These have got a bit of torque on them. There's the second one. Okay, so I've got two bolts off. I still got two or three on. I'm gonna put the jack underneath the oil pan with a two by four to support the engine. And then we'll try to take this uh, aluminum arm off. Okay guys, so I started taking the bolts off for the mount, the, the mounting arm there. And I found there's uh, one, two, three, four, five. There's a sneaky bolt that's attached to the compressor. And I don't know if you can see my hand there, but it's right at the bottom, right there. I'll try to run my extension out there and see if it actually points it out. It's, it's right there where the extension goes right there 
that one there. Once we take those off, then it all come off. So I will try to put the socket onto that one and see. I think swivel socket is probably the best bet for that one. Okay guys, so to get to that tiny little bolt at the bottom, the best way that I could figure out was put your hand underneath the frame. I'll try to move the camera around so I can actually show you. And the socket just comes up right up top here. Is this visible? Okay, you put your hand through here with a swivel socket. And then a small extension is enough and you can just put your wrench under there and just turn it till it comes off it mine wasn't that tight so i take it I look quite loose it's a very tricky spot to get to and one thing i must stress on is it's easier to do this job if you got a socket oh, not a socket if you got a driver with fine gears so you get a lot more clicks in a smaller space because otherwise you won't have that much of a motion range what i was using was a gear wrench 120 xp and that works a charm in a tight spot you can just get still a lot of clicks and get this long bolt to go you can see it's quite a long bolt okay guys so it turned out to be a little bit more challenging to get to the bottom bolt of the metal arm but to tackle that I had to remove two more nuts on the side of this metal shield here there's one 10 mil on this side easily accessible with an extension so you can just work it from this angle here and just run an extension straight you'll have enough space to undo it once the plate moves, it gives you a lot more room here to actually put an extension right under the uh, under the arm there. And then a swivel socket would just do the trick there. And the mount comes off loose. There you go, it's, it's loose now. I just wanted to show you this because I looked everywhere and nobody would actually shown how they tackle this bottom bolt some mentioned using a box end wrench or offset wrench but i thought a swivel socket did the trick pretty good and that might be a good tip for you guys my mount seems pretty much done there's nothing much to it now so once i take it off i'll show you now all the bolts are off i'm gonna take off that bottom one that i just loosened and then we'll pull the arm out. All right guys, so the arms bolts are off and now we've jacked up the motor a bit. Now the arm should come off. Let's see. The engine is still hitting it. Come on, man. There we go. That's it. Yeah, you okay. can pull the top part of the rubber right off. That came off. Now just wiggle it to the side. There we go. Okay guys, now the bottom mount bolts are right there. Hang on, I'll use the, the tool. So they're right above the drive shaft it's kind of an awkward spot but still accessible there's one and the other one is right next to it i took it off already i don't know if the camera's catching yeah there's there's one that shiny shiny spot there there was first one i took that one off it's a 16 mil bolt and then there's the other one you just need large extensions two of them and then just work an angle right below it And actually be able to show you here so there it is hang on I'll set the camera up first I want to show you how to 
in order to get to the bottom bolt nut underneath the engine mount, you got to snake your uh, socket, swivel socket, and a small head 16 inch like this. I'm just showing you this because I spent a bit of time trying to figure out which is the best way to get to it because larger socket, deep socket doesn't fit. So you've got to go like this. I'll show you from the outside angle. So you got to go below the drive shaft through the control arm and then right there. I'll show you from this angle too. This is probably the best angle you can find to work with it. Okay guys, so now we've taken both the bolts off the nut, yeah, the nuts off the bottom. We can just take out the motor mount and pull it out. Yeah, look at this. This thing is done, guys. It's, it's just busted. There's nothing, nothing left in it. So now we're gonna bring in the new, new mount and then put that one on. Okay guys, so I started to put the bolts back on again. But one thing I want to say is I didn't use uh, the genuine motor mount from Mercedes-Benz. And these cheapo ones have got the wrong marking. The front is on the back because the thinner side is supposed to go at the front and the thicker is supposed to go at the back. So be mindful of that. I just had to switch it because the fitment was way off. So we literally had to switch it, compare it with the old mount. And the old mount has the front marking on the right spot where it's supposed to. These ones, the aftermarket ones, have a wrong marking. It's at the back instead of the front. So if you try the mount and you follow the procedure and all of a sudden it doesn't line up, more than likely this is the culprit. Just pay attention to that and you'll be okay. So now, we gotta chuck in the one at the bottom. And this is a hard one to get to. And it really gets easier if you take this plate off from here, the metal plate. Only three, actually not two, three 10 mil bolts, or yeah, 10 mil bolts that you can access from sideways. You get enough clearance to do. And then you can get to this mount modem screw otherwise uh the sorry the modem bolt otherwise it's a real pain to work with that one and right now i think with the plate off we can just go straight in like that maybe i'm being too positive here minute there we go turn the camera here it'll show there's one more right there one more bolt it needs to go and then last but not least is the compressor one for right now, I can actually get get at it from here, so I might just do it that way. Okay, rookie mistake. I might have to get this one slightly loose. I got too excited and tightened it too much. All right, let's do that. I need a little bit of flex in the arm to get the last bolt back in. Then tighten this one at the bottom too. Okay, so this is supposed to go through here, guys. Goes right through the control arm in there. To the control arm, and our swivel socket, boom, straight in. Okay, so now 
I wanted to just stress on one thing. That bolt right there in the far corner, yeah. you can only hand tighten that bolt. And once you've reached your lowest point with the with the thing, then maybe your socket will fit like I'm trying to now. It's an E10, but it also works with the with the 10 mil socket, with the 10 mil wrench. That's what I ended up doing to tighten it. Oh yeah, now it actually did get on it at the very last point. So now, now we got one, two, three, fourth one's on the compressor. It's a little bit diagonal towards the, the bottom. And the fifth one's at the far back bottom. So once you tighten those up, or the top plate on and uh, the bolt as well so the top sections all done as far as the mount goes there we go so this like that and like this we can figure that out you guys, I can't stress enough how easy it is with moving the plate from in front. When I put the plate back on, I'll show you which plate I keep going on about. Okay guys, this is a size 18 that you gotta tighten. It's a slow go because there's not a whole lot of space unless you have a size 18 geared box and then you can just smash it quicker. Otherwise it's like, takes a few minutes to get to it get it done but there's loads of space to do that don't have to be crazy tight okay now we got that done we're gonna try now we're gonna put that plate on okay so this is the plate guys that goes over the mount here it's basically a secure point for the heat shield. And at the bottom, it holds the, I think it's the coolant hose for the uh, transmission is what it does. Okay guys, this is all tightened up now. Everything's buttoned up. Just remember to install this, uh, this heat shield back on and to put the heat shield back on you'll need that metal plate this this plate that gets mounted on the side by three 10 mil uh, bolts and to line them up just get under the car and line them up from the front because you got a better view from here and once you put one bolt in the other two will follow suit and make sure you've tightened the two nuts down the bottom one top nut with the 18 mil up top and once all that is secure just put your wheel well liner on the wheel on and the driver side motor mount job is done thank you very much for watching if you have any questions just put them down below in the comments and i'll try and uh, do my best to reply back and if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. It helps me make more content. If you already have, then I really thank you for that. Have a great day. Bye now.